Well, hello again and welcome to Jane's Lives. I'd like to share another story with you this week of a lady that we knew some years ago and how she got freed from occultic activity in her life. So I'm going to hand over to Paulie now to read her testimony. And I trust that people that are listening to this will surrender their lives over to Christ. Thank you, Pauline. Can you believe it? I always knew there was a God, and I acknowledged him, and I believed in him. But I hadn't given my life to Jesus. My mother and grandmother from gypsy stock had powers, but I don't think my mother knew how to use them. My grandmother used the evil eye a lot, that I know, but she wasn't an evil person. She was actually a very good and kind person. Mm. I developed quite a talent with my powers. It all started with my first pregnancy. During the second trimester, I started hallucinating. What I was seeing were cats. They'd appear when I least expected them and disappeared from the top down. All cats, tabby, ginger, black and white. It took me back to when I was a child and I saw and heard cats after our mother had our tabby put down. I never minded the hallucinations. I found them comforting, but I got it into my head that I must have been a white witch. After my baby was born, and with time on my hands, I got interested in other people's pregnancies. I'd guess at which mother was going to be pregnant next, and I was always right. I thought it was a sort of baby charming, which used to carry on centuries ago. And I became quite good at it. And this carried on with a certain amount of glee until one day, to my horror, I heard a mum who had denied her pregnancy until she could hide it no longer say she didn't want the baby. And I felt responsible. What had I done? I asked God's forgiveness and renounced my power. But I still hadn't given my life to Jesus. Later, in my thirties, I was working as a nurse. I'd forgotten all about my previous misdemeanours and was enjoying my career, doing a good job and feeling very justified. I developed a neat line in psychokinetics. If people annoyed me, revenge was easy. No effort was needed to make them have an accident, to drop something, break something, or have some minor irritation go wrong in their lives. A nasty piece of work. Nothing major until one day a tutor we had working in the hospital annoyed me in the extreme. She was a nasty piece of work and did all she could to humiliate students. This was a step too far. I thought the accident on her and the next day she came in quite shaken up and told everyone that she'd left the road and her car had landed in a ditch. Luckily, she was unharmed. Horror overtook me again. Secretly, I thought she deserved it, but I didn't like what I was doing, and once again asked God for forgiveness and renounced my power. But I still hadn't given my life to Jesus. I was now living in another part of the country and I'd taken up with a clergyman. Nice one, thought I. He would be sure to help me with my fight against evil. Not so. We went out a couple of times and then he disappeared. And I only saw him at services. No explanation was given until one day he paid me a visit to tell me that he'd something to say, but he couldn't say it now. Well, I was puzzled until several mutual acquaintances informed me that he was gay. I was very annoyed 
that he should have used me to try out being straight, or even worse, to give himself some credibility in the parish. At the time of the discovery, my son and a friend were staying with me at my house. We were having a whale of a time insulting this man and finding suitable punishments for him and laughing. When I heard a noise outside, it was dark, and I drew open the curtains to look. Two glowing lights were set in the vegetable patch in my garden, like a couple of eyes. I was terrified. The devil was upon me. I'd played fast and loose with him for many years, and now he was waiting. I prayed out loud for God to deliver me and us from this horror, and I was sorry, and I would never do anything like that again. Sound familiar? Have you read this story before? Did I give my life to Jesus? A couple of days later, when my son and friend had gone home, the vicar of my church came to see me. I was never so delighted to see him. He caught me in the kitchen doorway and to my complete surprise he said, You must give your life to Jesus Christ now. Well, he caught me completely off guard when he said, Repeat this prayer after me. I can't remember the prayer or what happened to the vicar after that, but I do remember feeling as though I was a foot up in the air. I had to go to work. I had to deal with the rest of my life. I was feeling as if I was floating and as if I couldn't really do anything else but listen to Jesus and receive from his spirit. How could I go to work now? But I just had to. I had to get on with it. I never told anybody what had happened to me. They would have thought I'd taken leave of my senses. I worked in an intensive care unit and had a very demanding job. I couldn't be walking around in a daze for the rest of my shift. I just know now that in God's eyes I am a very, very special and that I was prized by God as a soldier of Christ. Mm. I have to get on and fight against the things which come against me using the weapons which the Spirit has provided me with. Years later I met an evangelist and prophet who prayed and in the name of Jesus removed the last shriveled up Gypsy Rose Lee vestiges of my powers, which hadn't been used for years, as I had at last given my life to Jesus. Praise God. I'd like to give opportunity to people, having read that story, true story of this lady that we've known for many years and of how she is free. If you'd like to trust in Jesus, I'd like you to pray this prayer after me now and come to a place of rest in the arms of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for all of my sins and come into my life as Saviour and Lord and fill me full to overflowing with the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Now if you prayed that prayer, connect yourself up to a local church and a minister. Put in your search engine, churches in your area. And Amen. they will help you. You're going to need help if you've been into that sort of stuff. And you're going to need someone that you can talk to. So, ask. And you will receive. Seek. And you will find. Knock. And the door will be open for you. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. God bless.